So, ladies and gentlemen, first thing I want to do is let's go back through. When you guys see a problem like this, even though it has a double angle, the first thing I want you guys to understand is forget about that there's a double angle. You don't need to worry about anything up to that point, up to this point. Okay? So let's just find the answers just like we did in the first two problems. Okay, and I know I kind of raced those, but up there. So first thing we want to do, guys, is just isolate the trigonometric function. So we add three to both sides. Four cosine squared of two theta equals three. Divide by four, divide by four. Cosine squared of two theta equals three over four. So undo the squaring by taking the square root. Cosine of two theta equals square root of three over two plus or minus. Does everybody at least feel comfortable with this? We can all get T's on our at least our quiz. Because that would at least get you to a T point. Right? We can at least get to that point. No, I'm sorry. Not there. This would give you to probably an H. Because we actually haven't evaluated yet. Right? Now let's go back to all let's go back to finding the solutions. When does cosine of what angle? Forget about the two again. Just forget about the two. Cosine of what angle gives you square root of three over two? So again, we go back to our unit circle and we say, when is cosine equal to the square root of 3 over 2? It's this angle. I just got to remember what that angle is by the unit circle. And the angle is pi over 6. And I know that it's plus or minus. So every other angle that has that same reference angle is cosine is either going to equal plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, I figure out all these angles. Again, if you're confused on this, just let me know. But I know, yes? Huh? Generally, could you square root before you divide it? No. <laughs> Dividing? Like, you could no, square root no, the no. 4 cosine. Oh. 4x squared equals 3. You don't take the square root for there. I mean, it works. We want to just, you always want to use the reverse order of operations. OK? All right. So, tech, so basically, here, we have theta equals our answers from our last example are pi over 6, which is this answer. 5 pi over 6, which is that answer, 7 pi over 6, which is this answer, and 11 pi over 6, which is that answer. Is everybody good with this? Again, I haven't taught anything. I'm just regurgitating what we've already done. Yes? Now the difference here is now we're going to change the type. Now we're going to change a little bit. Because the problem isn't saying solve for theta. The problem is now saying solve for 2 theta. So all we have to do extra is just undo multiplying by 2. So if we divide by 2, theta equals pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, and 22 pi over 12. And many students would say, OK, I'm good. That's actually easy. I understand it. But the problem is that's not all the answers. Yes, question. OK, so you went from 11 to 22, but then you go by the 10. Or sorry, sorry, that's supposed to be 11. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I thought you would have to divide it all in So just remember, pi over 6 divided by 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1 multiplied by the reciprocal. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's not all the answers, though. But that's at least the easiest four answers to find. So we got to find all the other answers. Because think about it, guys. If I said I want to find all the answers between 0 and 2 pi, we're now dealing, dealing with a denominator of 12. We haven't dealt with many problems with the denominator of 12. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Right? So this is kind of a little new uncharted territory for us. However, I would say we're pretty comfortable with understanding that 0 to 2 pi then is um, 24 pi over 12. Would you guys agree with me at least on that statement? Yeah? Does that make sense? 24 divided by 12 is 2? Look at our answers. The highest answer we got is 11 pi over 12. Do you think there may be some, there's room in here for more answers? Don't you guys kind of agree, maybe think? So what, what I think is helpful to understand this is to understand, to go back to our all solutions answer, which I erased um, for you, but hopefully you guys wrote down. So if I was going to find the all the solutions, I said theta equals pi over 6 plus um, pi n. And then I had theta equaled 5 pi over 6 plus pi n. Right? Remember my simplified answers? Now again, if you didn't do the simplified answers, you would have to do this process to all four of them. 
right? Remember I showed you guys all four of them and it's like, that's what I'm saying, it's like way too much work. That's why it's helpful to understand why these simplified answers work. So again, this is from the previous problem. This is representing all the solutions. The difference here is now we have 2 pi. So you divide by 2 here. And again, the more practice you guys get with this, you can actually start doing a lot of this stuff in your head. Um, pi halves n, pi equals 5 pi over 12 plus pi halves n. Now, yes? So we're just dividing by 2 here. Say if it was 3, it was cosine of 3 theta. Then you do everything with the by 3? Yeah. But again, remember, we are not done with the answers. And I'm going to show you why we're not done. Again, remember, this represents all the solutions. So let's pretend n is 0. If n is 0, what is my answer? Oh, I'm sorry, divided by 12. If n is 0, what is one of my answers? If n is 0, what's one of my answers? Pi over 12. Do we already have that solution? Yeah, so we're good there. What if n was 1? If n is 1, that's pi, half, pi 12 plus 1 half. Now, again, it might be helpful to understand pi over 2 is equal to 6 pi over 12, right? So let's do that. What's 6 pi over 12 plus pi over 12? 6 pi over 12 plus pi over 12? 7, 7 pi over 12. Do we have that one? Yeah, yeah OK. Ms. Blue, why are you wasting our time? Could we do it again? What if n was 3? Basically, could we just add 6 pi over that? Like that would be the third time multiplying it by 3? Yes? What's 6 pi over 12 plus 7 pi over 12? 13 pi over 12, is that an answer choice? No. no, but guess what? It is a solution. So you have to add that. 13 pi over 12. Could we do it again? Yeah, we can go all the way up to 24 pi, because that's 2 pi. So if we add 6 pi over 12 again, we get 19 pi over 12. Can we do it again? Yes. Sure, why not? 25 pi over 12. Ah, uh, uh-uh, right? That's above 2 pi. So 25 pi doesn't work. So do you, do you understand how I get where this came from? Do you understand where this comes from? So all I'm doing is n is 1. n is 0. You have pi over 12. n is 1. 1 times 1 half is 1 half. 1 half is the same thing as 6 pi over 12. Would you agree with that? So what's pi over 12 plus 6 pi over 12? 7 pi over 12. You just add the numerators. Pi over 12 plus 6 pi over 12 is 7 pi over 12. Let's add 6 pi over 12 again. Because what if n was 3? If n was 3, then it'd be, you know, it'd be 3 times this, or 3 times that, which would be 3 times that would be 18 pi over 12. Um, pi halves. Yeah. So if you add 3, so if you added 18 pi over 12 plus pi over 12, you'd get 19 pi over 12. Which is my answer right there. OK? Um, now, so we kind of we maxed out everything there. Let's do this one. If 5 pi over 12, if n is 0, we have 5 pi over 12. Is that an answer choice? Yeah, we're good. What if n was 1? So it would be 5 pi over 12 plus 6 pi over 12, which is 11 pi. Do we have that? Yeah, we're good. Let's add 6 pi over 12 again, try to make it quicker. 17 pi over 12. Do we have 17 pi over 12? Nope, that's an answer, though. And then let's add 6 pi over 12 again. We get 23. Does that an answer? Yes. Yeah, of course it is. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all the solutions. No, there are not four solutions. There are eight solutions. Now, before you start saying, what, how did you do that, let's go and take a look at the graph so it can make some more sense. Okay. All right. 